CataractCoach.com, traumatic white cataract, and a bulging lens capsule in a 23-year-old patient. What technique's going to be best? We can see this is an intumescent white cataract, so the capsule bag is fluid-filled, and it's bulging forwards. It's hard to see that in this microscope view, but if you look at a pre-op exam at the slit lamp, there you can see that central lens capsule is arched and bulging forward. This tells us the capsule bag is highly pressurized. So we'll have to use tripen blue dye to stain the lens capsule. It's going to also help decrease the elasticity, because remember this is a 23-year-old patient, and the capsule tends to be more elastic. Now viscoelastic is being placed in the anterior chamber, and our goal is to really pressurize the anterior chamber. We want the pressure in the anterior chamber to be higher than the pressure in the capsule bag. And a little bit of a soft shell technique here, so first dispersive, and now a little cohesive viscoelastic. 27 gauge needle is going to be used here to puncture the central lens capsule as well as aspirate some of this milky white fluid. So poking in, bevel down with a 27 gauge needle, puncturing the lens capsule and aspirating on the plunger of that 3cc syringe. Now that the capsule bag is depressurized, the main incision is made and the capsorexis can be created. And this part goes very well, really not much of an issue here. Now, this young patient has bilateral white cataracts, which is presumably from a traumatic bilateral airbag injury after a car accident. Fortunately, the rest of his eye exam is normal, including the zonger support of the lens. So there's the completion of the rexus. That looks great. And here comes the phaco probe. Now, there's not going to be much phaco energy needed, if any. You can simply aspirate out the lens material because, again, this is a young patient. And the lens material is very soft. Total ultrasound energy here is essentially zero. In fact, you could just use the IA probe to aspirate out all of the lens material. So the soft, soft lens material obviously is very opaque and it's limiting his vision. And it's going to be removed quite easily. For the lens implant, we're going to choose a toric lens, given that the patient has two diopters of pre-existing corneal astigmatism. We're also aiming for a refraction of about minus a half in each eye, so distance dominant, with the understanding that the patient will use reading glasses for near work. There goes the eye well, going in the capture bag nicely, and the rest of this case is going to go just fine. You may want to spend a little more time here removing some of that lens material from the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim. Keep in mind these young patients are far more likely to develop posterior capsule opacification, and nearly 100% of them are going to require a YAG laser capsulotomy in the first year or so after the cataract surgery. So there's the toric lens, looks pretty good, and the case goes beautifully. You can see there's a nice overlap there of the capsulorexis. He's sealing up the incisions. This patient had a nice outcome. At the slit lamp, you can see now we've restored the anatomy, and look how deep the anterior chamber is, and there's no bulging anymore. Now here's the patient's second eye being done by a different resident this time. And so you can see again poking in with the needle, aspirating out any lens material. And now we're going to use the cystotome and do a double rexus technique here. So using the cystotome to create a very small central capsulotomy. This is going to be the first baby capsule rexus we'll do. We can remove the lens material then. And afterwards, we can enlarge the capsulorexis. So there's the small baby capsulorexis. Here's the phaco incision. And again, we can just use our IA probe to remove the lens material. This does not require any phaco energy whatsoever. So we'll take out that lens capsule here. And you can see the small central opening is continuous. And because it has that round continuous edge, we know that it is strong. And so it won't radialize on us. Putting that IA probe tip within the capsule bag allows us to aspirate all this lens material. And that's a little tougher to work because you're operating through a very small capsule opening. So using a bimanual technique like this to remove the lens material is again very helpful. And so we'll clean up all the lens cortex and you'll see we're left with a clean capsule bag at a tiny rexus. So here we'll put the eye well in the capsule bag first. This can serve now as a guide in, so we can decide how big to make the rexus. 
So the eye now f still filled with viscoelastic, going to use some baby scissors here, make a little cut in the anterior lens rim, and then continue the capsulorexis. Again, this is a resident surgeon who's operating, doing a pretty good job. It tends to pull out a little bit, so that's a good save. Bring that back in. And we need, again, just to have this continuous. Though it's not a perfect circle in this case, it's not going to affect the refractive outcome in the least. The lens can now be rotated into position after we move viscoelastic from behind the optic, and the case goes beautifully. I'm happy to say the patient had a beautiful result. And here's the post-op from the second eye. Again, great location of the rexus as well as the position of the lens. Thanks for watching. Check out our teaching channel on cataractcoach.com. There's a lot more stuff there than you'll find here just on YouTube. And you can sign our, up for our free daily email. We'll send you a great case like this to your inbox every single day. Thanks for watching.